Praise God. Well, why don't you join hands and let us pray. Heavenly Father, we give you praise. We give you honor. We thank you, Lord God, for the power of your word to transform our lives, to cause us to uh, go from one place of glory to another place of glory. We thank you, Lord God, that our ears are open and attentive to what you have to say today, because surely we will have increase as a result of hearing it. I thank you, Father, for the fruit that shall abound in the days, the weeks, the months, and the years to come. And we give you all the praise and the honor for it. In the name of Jesus, amen. 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 Well, if you would, please take your seats. Again, this is Mother's Day, and of course, we set... Uh, aside a time to uh, honor mothers and of course there'll come the time when we honor uh, fathers as well. When I was little, I don't know about you, but we had a children's day. Did, did anybody else have a children? Yeah. yeah. We kind of like, now we don't really do the children anymore, but hey amen. But uh, we set aside a time to honor and reverence mothers as well as we should, our parents as well as we should, because God has some things to say concerning us where it comes to honor, when it comes to honoring our parents. Uh, Let us first start, however, in the book of Psalms 139. Psalms 139. Because it's indeed a blessing to be a mother or if you are Uh, if you've adopted someone or if you just are a mother figure for someone else, that's a wonderful blessing to be regarded in such a manner. Because I want you to understand that there is no child that's an accident. God intended for you to be here and you are part of a fantastic plan that he has for your life. We just always have to make sure that we're looking at it from the right point of view. Because I know that there are some people who say, you know, honor my parents, man, they didn't treat me very nice or, or uh, they, they, you know, they were abusive to me and all the things that we can point out and say are critical of the ones who birthed us. But I want you to understand as a Christian, you have to go beyond that and understand that God wanted you here. He wanted you in this earth because he wanted you to be a part of his master plan. So when we start looking at our real identity and identifying ourselves with Christ, then we can, all, we can forgive, we can get past those hurdles that say, you know, if my parents would have done this, if my mom had done that, then I would be a better person. No, when you come to know Christ, that's when you become a better person. That's when you step into your destiny and you have to understand, again, God wanted you here regardless of how you got here. He wanted you here, whether you were born out of wedlock, even if someone, and I know this is tragic, but even if someone raped you and you got here, God saw that it was beneficial to have you here in this earth. And he has a great and wonderful plan for your life. And understand that when you got, when you were born, when you were born naturally into this earth and uh, God's intention for you was a supernatural uh, uh, life, that means that as a born again believer, you allow God to uh, handle the hurts and the pains and you don't keep going over and over and over them because you're looking at your future and you're looking at your destiny. You're looking at why I came and why I'm here. And a lot of people are doing that and they're trying to connect it back to their parents. But understand God is the one who has the plan for your life. And as a matter of fact, God tells the parents, train a child up in the way they should go in their particular bent. Not for you, but for his purposes. It's for his plan. So in the book of uh, Psalms 139 and verse 14, reading out the Amplified, it says, um, I will confess and praise you. For you are fearfully and wonderfully, and for the awful wonder of my birth, wonderful are your works, and that my inner self knows right well. So here is is a confession of thank you for my wonderful birth. He says in the works that you're doing in me. He says my inner self knows it. 
My, my, the real me knows the wonders of my birth. The real me understands that uh, I was created in God's image. The real me understands that God's intention is for me to be a son or a daughter of the most high God. And that overranks everything that's natural in my life. It cannot even compare to what God has planned for me. Let's look at Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2. I'm, la I'm laying some groundworks and I need to lay this so you will understand when I get to the main points here this morning. But in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10, reading out of the Amplified, listen to what he says about us who were born into the earth. He says, for we are God's own handiwork, his workmanship, recreated in Christ Jesus, born anew, that we may do those good works which God predestined planned beforehand for us, taking paths which he prepared ahead of time, that we shall walk in them, living the good life which he prearranged and made ready for us to live. Listen at what God, all God was thinking about before you ever came into the earth. He said, I already prearranged. He said, I already set everything up. I already got this plan for your life, and you need to stop always connecting to your natural life and understand what your spiritual life is supposed to be about because that's the only way you're going to be fulfilled. That's the only way you're going to find the joy, the peace, the happiness that you're looking for to get out of a man or get out of a woman or get out of a person. God said, I can take you further than what they can do. You think you're happy now just because they did nice things for you. He said, but where I want to take you and the plan that I've set you in the day you got born again is so far outreaching anything that's natural that any man can do for you that you need to be looking at that and saying, thank God he allowed me to be born in this earth. Thank God for the plan he's got for my life. Thank God for the anointing that's on my life. Thank God for the talents he put on the inside of me because God's plan for me is that I am going to impact others for him. God's plan for me is that I am going to be known in the kingdom of God. And when I get finished with this journey, he's going to say, well done, my good and faithful servant. Well done. And that's why I'm here in the earth. And no man can do that for me. No mother, no father, no sister, no brother can take me where God wants to take me. So thank you, Lord, for allowing me to be in this earth. Thank you, God, for allowing me to be a part of your grand scheme, your grand plan. Show me, God, why I'm here. And only God can answer those questions for all of us, regardless of how we got here. So we should celebrate the fact that God allowed us to be in this earth. Amen? Amen. Let's look at Romans chapter 13. Romans chapter 13. We're going to look at verse 7. Again, we're looking at it on, uh, in the Amplified. Romans chapter 7, excuse me, Romans chapter 13, verse 7. And it reads, render to all men their dues. He says, pay taxes to whom taxes are due. Revenue to whom revenue is due. Respect to whom respect is due. And honor to whom honor is due. Let's look at Exodus chapter 20. Exodus 20. I'm not going to keep you long so you can go out and Honor your mothers. Pay tributes to your mothers. Exodus chapter 20, verse 12, reading out of the Amplified. He says, regard, treat with honor, do obedience and courtesy your father and mother, that your days may be long in the land the Lord your God gives you. Notice that there is a promise attached to this particular command. It is the only promise that's attached to a commandment. And you may say, well, that's in the Old Testament, Pastor Deborah. Well, let us look in Ephesians chapter 6 because Paul felt it necessary to bring this up again. 
Ephesians chapter 6. And verse 2. Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 2. He says, honor, esteem, and value as precious your father and your mother. This is the first commandment with a promise. Honor your mothers. It's the first commandment with a promise. It's talking about an inward reverence and an outward acts. It's talking about comfort. He's talking about when you do these things inwardly and outwardly, he said it's supposed to bring a certain uh, uh, level of comfort and security and well-being follows people who honor their parents. The motive shouldn't be just because I'm going to get a reward, but you should do it because it's God's will. It's the thing he asks you to do. And he says, and as a sidebar to that, things are going to be good in your life. Things will work well in your life. God wants us to do this, and he's, he's saying, this is good for you. And like I said, if you can't seem to find any good thing in them, Understand that you were put here for a purpose. And you need to at least give them honor for getting you here. Because you couldn't have gotten here any other way. Amen. Amen. So he says we need to give honor where honor is due. And he said mothers are due this honor. Mothers are due this honor. Let's go to Matthew chapter 15. Listen, God is giving you an assurance. He's give, when he says, you know, that, that your days will be good or days will be long, he's giving you an assurance that there is a particular blessing that's attached to you honoring your parents. A particular blessing. You know, we have the, the scripture that says, he who finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor of the Lord. There's, God is, is sometimes specific about how things are going to come to you. And so some people are trying to figure out, you know, why things are not going well. You might want to check back and see what your relationship is with your parents. You might need to check back and find out, you know, what, what, what's going on with you and your parents. Because God says, I'm asking you to do this. I didn't tell, them, tell you they were going to earn it. See, when people figure, you got you to gotta earn my respect. God says, no. No, this is, this is, this, I'm attaching a blessing to the fact that you honor them in spite of. Are you all following me? Honor them in spite of because they got you here and I'm going, I am going to do fantastic things in your life. I'm going to do the exceeding abundantly above all you can think or ask. Matthew chapter 15. Uh, let's start at verse 4. I don't know. Some of you all may go home and your parents may be thinking, what in the world happened to you? <laughs> hey, Mom, how you doing? Just came to get a hug. And she could be cussing you out. You'd be like, praise God anyhow. I'm glad you have a voice to speak, Mom. I'm glad you are, babe, you are expressive in all your ways. It's just grand. <laughs> Isn't it wonderful? Can I buy you dinner? Can I do something for you? Because I'm not going to let your attitude and what you do affect what God wants to do with me. Are you all understand? Because I know I, every time we, we teach the mothers, I, I always get people, but you, Pastor Deborah, you didn't know my, my mother. She got you here. She got you here. Praise God. Matthew chapter 15, starting at verse 4. It says, For God commanded, commanded, honor your father and your mother. And who who curses or reviles or speaks evil of or abuses or treats improperly his father or mother, let him surely come to his end by death. God is serious about this. He said, you, he, listen at that. God said you need to die. If you don't honor your father and your mother. See, a lot of times people, if we're going to get 
the best that God has for us, it is the utmost important that we don't cherry pick the Bible. And what is, whatever is easy and comfortable for me to do, God, I'm on it. But it, as soon as it becomes difficult for me, then uh, how, how many of you have heard I'm working on it? Yes. Now, you are 40 years old, <laughs> and you're still working on it? You had not gotten with God yet to help you get past this? He says, he says, <laughs> let him surely come to his end by death. Then he says, but you say, if anyone tells his father or mother what you would have gained from me, that is the money or whatever I have that might be used for helping you, is already dedicated as a gift to God, then he is exempt and no longer under obligation to honor and help his father or his mother. See, they had a practice back then that they didn't want to honor or respect their parents through any, uh, uh, any giving or any properties or, or any goods. They would say, well, I dedicated that to the Lord. So I'm, I'm now, now, what, now what I have decided to do is I'm going to put the commandment of God on the same level as what I think is right. Yes. I mean, God said do it, but... God, I've decided to do it this way. And I stuck your name in it so that I, I'm excused. I'm exempt from it. Because after all, God, uh, I could have I helped, but uh, I willed it to the church because I didn't want to honor my parents. Let me read it again. He said, but you say, if anyone tells his father and mother what you would have gained from me, that is the money or whatever I have that might have been used for helping you, is already dedicated as a gift to God, then he is exempt and no longer under obligation to honor or help his father or his mother. So for the sake of your tradition, notice he said your tradition, the rules handed down by your forefathers, you have set aside the word of God, depriving it of force and authority and making it of no effect. You pretenders, hypocrites, admirably and truly did Isaiah pro prophesy of you when he said, these people draw near me with their mouths and honor me with their lips, but their hearts hold off and are far away from me. See, sometimes we think, think well, this is, this is a big thing with God, and this is a little thing with God, and God will pardon me if I don't do this, or pardon me if I don't do that, because it's just a small thing. God says, no, I'm looking at all of it. What you know to do, do. Am I correct? Yes. And see, again, if you get the proper perspective, it becomes easier for you. The thing of it is, is you're not looking at it the right way. You're not looking at it the way God is looking at it. And so, therefore, honor is not given where honor is due. Because he's saying, you honor. If I tell you to honor someone, that's what you do. You regard them. And see, you may not have a lot to give, but what you do have to give, you can do that. You may not have a whole lot of time, but you got time to pick up the phone yes. or text or email or Instagram or message. I know you do. <laughs> People do it all the time. Yes. Amen. You can figure it out. Yes. Yes, you can figure it out. God says, this is something I'm asking you to do. This is something that I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, it's a good thing for you. First yes. Timothy chapter five. Yeah, he said, he said, he actually, when he's talking about this, he's talking about your worship is in vain when you know to do something that you don't do. When they call, you don't want to pick up the phone. Mm -hmm. You know, I just think texting is the best. 
I do. Because when you're done with the conversation, you ain't got to do nothing else, right? You can say what you have to say, and then you can be done. Am I correct? You can end the conversation anytime, right? So you can text. Look at somebody say, you can text. Not my mother, but <laughs> she is working on, how she put it, the World Wide Web. We have to say it all. She's working on the World Wide Web and how she can do things. <laughs> oh, I, uh, I was, when I was uh, studying this, I think about my mom. Uh, some moms don't say what they want, but my mom does. She doesn't have a problem with it. But if you don't do it, she don't have a problem with that either. But you're going to know what she wants or what she thinks or what you promised her. She is going to. How many of you got mamas that if you promise them something, oh, they're going to remind you that you said it. <laughs> they're going to remind you said it. My mom, just, she just turned 85. And, uh, oh, yeah, she's. Listen, guys, she's still exercising circles around me. She still exercises five times a week, hour and a half in the gym. I'm like, why do you make me feel so bad? <laughs> this 85-year-old woman is going, she's like, oh, yeah, I'm going to swim today. And, you know, I think I might use the weights when I'm swimming. She told me, I've won all the awards that the seniors have where I go. <laughs> She says, I've excelled everything they put in front of me. I'm like, that's great, Mom. <laughs> My mom is so independent that um, we, we were doing a cruise. I can't remember. One cruise, our one conference. We were going on a cruise, and my mom was supposed to be going with us. So she flew from Atlanta down to Fort Lauderdale and left her passport. So my sister, she was going to be my sister's roommate. And of course, I'm a, a speaker at this conference. So she can't find her passport, and they won't let her on this ship. And I'm just like, oh my God, y'all got to let my mother on this ship. And so we tried all kinds of things. My brother tried to find the passport. She was like, I know I put it there. And of course, he couldn't find it, so we couldn't get on the ship. And so, um, of course, everybody's like, what are you going to do with your mom? And I asked her, do you want to fly back to Atlanta? She said, no, I didn't fly down here to fly back to Atlanta. Just leave me here in Fort Lauderdale. I'll be just fine. She was 80 years old then. And so because my sister and I know our mother, everybody thought we were horrible. When we got back from the cruise, and I did say we went on the cruise, my mother stayed in Fort Lauderdale. She said, I had the best time. She said, I found this shopping center, and I went down, and I did this, and this food place was all over here. And I was, they, I, said, I told you my mom was going to be okay. She is just fine. But that's just the kind of mother I have. And uh, God bless her, you know. I tried to blame her several times for some inconsistencies in my life. But then you know what she told me? Get over it. You know Jesus. And he's supposed to fix all of that. My mother never allowed any of us to put her on a guilt trip about how she raised us. You got here, didn't you? You know Jesus, don't you? That's the end of my thing now. You with him, amen. So I'm just telling you what my mama said, and y'all probably need to jot that down because that's exactly how she feels. So <laughs> we're consistently trying to do things for my mom because uh, she doesn't actually want anything in particular until this year. So uh, shall I tell this guy? She's probably going to listen to this. She listens to everything that I teach. <laughs> she said, uh, I, 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 I'm going to get a new car. I said, you're going to get a car? She says, yes, I'm going to get a car, but I have to get it before my birthday. Like, this is three days before her birthday. You got to get it before your birthday? Yeah, I got to get it before my birthday because I don't want to buy two tags. <laughs> oh, what are you talking about? <laughs> she said, because if I buy a tag now, then when I get the new car, then I have to buy. 
I said, you don't have to buy two tanks. You just transfer it. She said, oh. So my brother says, well, what do you want for your birthday? She said, a new car. <laughs> I'm thinking, were well, you going to buy a new car or you had planned for us to buy you a new car? <laughs> And I said, Gerald, there's nothing else on that list? He said, nope. She just want a car. So <laughs> my mother came down and drove away, or my brother drove her new car last week back to Atlanta. All right. uh, <laughs> my siblings and I bought her a car. I was like, so she is, my mother's never at a loss. You want to do something for me? Let me tell you what it is you can do for me. And I guess it all goes back to, I got you here, didn't I? Kept y'all through school so y'all can get good jobs. Do what you need to do concerning me. Respect me as your mother. And don't be talking about I didn't do this for you and I didn't do that for you. It's okay. I got you the way you are. So be a blessing to me now. I'm telling you, my mom is, she's a wonderful lady. I love her. <laughs> I love her. Let's go to um, 1 Timothy chapter 5. 1 Timothy chapter 5. First Timothy chapter five, and let us look at this in the King James Version. It says, but if any widow have children or nephews, let them learn first to show piety at home and to requite their parents. You know what that means? To pay them back. To requite their parents, for that is good and acceptable before God. It means to return the favor or service to them for having brought you here. You know what? It also means to set free and discharge them. That if they've done any ill towards you, it says set them free and discharge them. In the book of Matthew, where I just read to you concerning um, uh, children who make a decision that they don't want to assist their parents. And of course, you assist them at the level that you are. It says, uh, it talks about, uh, or it makes the point of areas of obedience that's due our parents. Um, so they're not only to be loved, but they're supposed to be feared and reverenced. Also, they're supposed to, you're supposed to accept their correction and be submitted to it. We're supposed to forgive them of their offenses and acknowledge when we are mad with them. Um, Last night, I was listening to uh, my son, Greg. He taught here the Saturday night service. And of course, I always wait for my children to do their own testimony, so that's why I don't ever give you their names. But his father, uh, he, he wanted to do something, and myself and uh, Greg did not agree with it at all. And so finally, we had to you know, talk to him about it and tell him that if you do this thing, it's going to cut you off from ministry, not from the family. We'll still love you but the decision that you're making will discontinue what God has for you in ministry. And so he was quite upset about it. And uh, for a good little while, he admitted last night that he was upset for two years. He was mad with us. But he reverenced us enough to do what we asked him to do. He didn't like it, but he did it. But today, he is so delighted that he did not go ahead with his choice but he honored us because it became a decision of who could hear from God. Could he and uh, could myself and, and his father hear from God or was he hearing from God? Because he'd been taught to hear from God. And so we didn't deny you can't hear from God, but on this, you're wrong. God did not tell you this. God's not showing you that. It comes from a desire that you want. You know, sometimes when you want to do stuff, it becomes so real to you that it's hard for you to see through what you want. 
So you start to make a list of why you should have it. And all of those things sound good to you. And you don't have any nays on the other side. But good parents can see what you cannot see. Or even sometimes sense what you cannot sense. I've, I've even told my children sometimes when they say, well, why can't I? And I'll tell them, the spirit of God is telling me you should. I don't have a... Uh, 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 a list of why not. All I know is, is I've been praying concerning you. And this is a thing you should not do. So it says that parents earn the right, especially if they're praying parents, especially if they hear from God. Because they always want the best for you. So again, parents and mothers in particular we're talking about today, they are not only to be loved, but they're to be feared and reverenced. Their correction should be submitted to. Offenses against them should be acknowledged. And he did acknowledge it. We knew he was mad for two years. We knew it. But we kept praying for him because we knew he'd see at the end. And, of course, the two years just had to do with his stubbornness, but it didn't have to last that long, but it did. <laughs> But in the meantime, he learned a lot of valuable lessons. Um, their tempers are to be, you need to put up, because they do, sometimes parents do have tempers. It's like you just need to be okay with it because God is asking us to honor them. Their infirmities, we're supposed to cover those up. You don't go out and criticize your parents to other people. You don't go out and tell them how low down they are. And, and you, you're not supposed to do that because that is not honoring them. So you don't put them down in front of other people. Amen. They're to be honored in, in your thoughts, words, and gestures. They are to be highly thought of and, est and esteemed. They are to be spoken to and of very honorably and with great veneration and to be, and you are to be, excuse me, and to be behaved in, and you should behave in a manner that's very respectful to them. And you need to relieve and assist and maintain them in a comfortable way as they age and as is necessary. That's what God is asking us to do. And he says, again, there's a promise that is attached to it, a specific promise for us. Let's go to uh, Genesis chapter 9. This is our last scripture, Genesis chapter 9, because this is an example of a family where the parents are not honored. Genesis chapter 9. Let's go to verse 20. I'm just trying to get you to understand the seriousness of this. The seriousness of doing what God is requesting and asking us to do. And in order to do that, a lot of times you got to take self out of it. Because that's the only reason you're upset is because you want something for yourself. Genesis chapter 9, verse 20. It says, and Noah began to be a husband. This means he was a planter, and he planted a vineyard. And he drank of the wine and was drunken, and he was uncovered within his tent. And Ham, the father of Cana, saw the nakedness of his father and told his two brothers without. In other words, he saw him, no honor, no respect. He runs out and tells people, even if it's his siblings. Daddy's in there naked as a gesture, as something uh, uh, funny, as something not honoring. And it says, and Shem and Japheth took a garment and laid it upon both of their shoulders and went backward. That means they walked backwards and they covered the nakedness of their father and their faces were backwards and they saw not their father's nakedness. And Noah awoke from his wine and knew that what his younger son had done unto him. And he said, Cursed be Canaan. A servant of servants shall, be, shall he be unto his brethren. And he said, Blessed be the Lord God of Shem, and Canaan shall be his servant. God shall enlarge Japheth, and he shall dwell in the tents of Shem, and Canaan shall be his servant. You see what happened? As a result of not honoring 
his father, but thinking of it as something funny or something to talk about or something to jeer about or, or to criticize. Instead of honoring him, instead of the state that he was in, because, you know, the Bible talks uh, concerning Noah as a man that is loved by God. God. God had a special relationship with him. And though he did one thing, and I don't know if it's just one, but they highlighted one thing, then he's criticized by his own son, not honored by his own son. And in those days, guess what fathers did? They handed out blessings that God honored and God held dear and God had to come to pass in their children's lives. But because of no respect, did no blessing. Now, no blessing from the father, no blessing. So you see, God takes it seriously. So we need to look at what God is saying to us. He says, do me a favor. Honor your parents. Honor your mother. Do it because I want to do something for you. Do it because it pleases me. See, a lot of times we're, we're trying to figure, what can I do to please God? I know I can stay up five hours and pray. I know I can fast. I know I can go to church uh, 500 times in this year. I know I can do this. And God said, it's those simple things that I'm asking you to do that you're tripping up on. And you can see a blessing come to you immediately. Because it says that it will give you peace. The problem is sometimes is we get so, things get so convoluted because we're in the world and we're listening to what other people say. And all this, oh, man, I have a dysfunctional family. Do you all recall the message that Pastor George Matthews taught? He said, God has a dysfunctional family. Look at all us. <laughs> you all understand what I'm saying? So we, 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 we can't look at things and measure things according to how the world sees it. Your father didn't do this for you. Your mother didn't do that for you. So you have a right now to be less than what God told you you could be. See, that's a lie from the pits of hell. Your life and the life that God has planned for you is, doesn't hinge upon other people. It hinges upon whether you do what he says to do or not. So I encourage you to go out and honor your parents. And some of you may say, well, you know, Pastor Deborah, they, you know, they're not here anymore. You can honor them by speaking what you know that was good about them to somebody today. In your words, you can say things concerning them that are honoring today. You can thank God that I got here and I appreciate the fact, Father, that I'm here today and that I'm a child of the Most High God and that you're going to do great exploits in my life. And Father, I forgive them because they, I'm sure, didn't know any better. They didn't know how to do it a different way. And then even if they did, look at somebody and say, you're still here. And God has promised you a life. It far exceed anything that they could ever provide or do for you. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Heavenly Father, we give you praise. We give you honor. We thank you, Lord God, for this wonderful day that we've chosen to set aside to honor mothers. I thank you, Lord God, that everyone here will take what you have said to heart and that they will release their parents, forgive their parents, if they will just move forward so that you can move forward with them. I thank you, Lord God, that as the day goes on, I thank you that you'll bring something back to their remembrance that will cause them to give honor where honor is due. Honor is due simply because you said to do it.
not because someone earned it, but because you said to do it. And being people after your own heart, it is our desire to please you in everything that we do. And we thank you, Lord God, for the softening of the hearts of those who have, have, have callous, calluses grown over them. Father, I thank you that today, as they release the hurts, the pain, as they release the, uh, uh, the nastiness, as they release the guilt, as they release their parents, I thank you, Lord God, for a freshness to come upon their lives. I thank you, Lord God, for a joy and a peace to saturate their souls. I thank you, Lord God, that you are the God of impossibilities. Even though it may seem like it's a, a, a wall, Father, I thank you that there's a door in the wall that they can walk through and get to the other side. And Lord, we just give you all the praise. We give you all the honor in the name of Jesus. Amen. If there's anyone here today and you're not born again, you don't know Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior, this is a wonderful opportunity for you. Because as I read before, God has a wonderful plan for your life. He's already pre-planned it. It's something that, that's so far above what you uh, could imagine or think. And we, you began that plan by accepting what Jesus Christ has done for you. It opens up a relationship with God so he can then start to communicate with you about this wonderful plan and how awesome that he has created you and made you. So if that's you today and you, you might say, I just want a relationship with God. This is how it begins. So if you'll raise your hands wherever you are, if you'd like to be, we call it born again. If you'll raise your hands wherever you are. Amen. If there's anyone here today and you'd like to be filled with the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues, again, that is an awesome gift from God. It's nothing to be afraid of, but it's a gift from God. And you know what? It actually is supernatural. But guess what? God is a supernatural God. And we expect for supernatural things to happen to us. According to the word of God, when we uh, receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, we have the ability to pray prayers that line up with what God is thinking. We have the ability to pray actually the perfect prayer because the Bible says that the Holy Spirit knows. Only one who knows the heart of a person. Praying in your heavenly language also brings a refreshing to you. Just kind of invigorates you and give you energy, give you a, 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 a joyfulness on the inside to move forward. So if that's you this morning and you'd like to be filled with the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues, or you simply just want to know about it, what does that mean? What is that like? We'll be very happy to uh, share with you. So if that's you this morning, if you'll please raise your hands wherever you are. Amen. And lastly, um, if God has laid upon your heart to join Revealing Truth Ministries, I'll just rejoice and be very excited to welcome you because that means that you have a gifting, anointing, or talent on the inside of you that's good for this part of the body of Christ. Also, that means that the word that's being taught here and the people that are here are here to uh, help you to make spiritual progress, to support you in the thing that God has called you to do. So if that's you this morning, if you'll please raise your hands wherever you are, if God has laid upon your heart to join Revealing Truth Ministries. Amen. Praise God. All righty then. Well, I certainly hope that you got something out of the message today. I hope that you were blessed. Cause you to think. <laughs> 